Now I've seen many people using the Samsung keyboard in its stock configuration without enabling all the awesome features that it comes with. For example, the gesture input is switched off by default and gesture input is really cool. It allows you to type by swiping over the words and quickly type out your messages. So to enable this, tap on the settings button in the keyboard toolbar. Once you're in the settings, scroll down and tap on swipe, touch and feedback. Inside, tap on keyboard swipe controls and set this to swipe to type. Now you'll be able to type messages by swiping your finger over the words. It takes a bit of practice, but once you get a hang of this, you'll be able to type out long messages fairly quickly. Awesome, right? So let's make a few more useful changes to the keyboard. So once again, we are gonna head back into the keyboard settings. And this time, we're gonna tap on layout. And here, we are going to switch off the number keys and then enable the alternate characters. And you'll notice that this is gonna make the keyboard a little compact and it also adds the number keys to the top word row of the keyboard. And you also get some additional characters. So while typing, you can long press to add the additional character or numbers to whatever you are typing. Just makes the keyboard a bit more functional and compact. Now I think the way you seek through videos on a Samsung smartphone is kind of annoying. So whenever you open a video, there is no video seek bar and you have to tap on the film strip to expand and then you will be able to seek through a video. This is fine for shorter videos but for a longer video it gets super annoying. Fortunately, we can tweak a setting in the gallery and bring back the good old video seek bar. Let me show you how. So when you're in the gallery, tap on the hamburger menu and head on into the settings. Scroll down and open about gallery. When you're inside, repeatedly tap on the version until you see a message gallery labs is enabled. Then go back, scroll down and open gallery labs. Here, scroll down to One UI 3.x, change the video player mode from default to legacy video seek bar and then quit the gallery. So now when you relaunch the gallery and open a video, it's gonna show a dedicated video seek bar. In my opinion, it's easier to seek through a video through this than the film strip. Now let's go back into the gallery labs and here you can enable another feature called timeline in album. So once you enable this, whenever you open an album, so let's open the camera album, You'll notice that all your photos and videos are now grouped by date. So this is a side by side comparison and I think grouping by date is a good idea. Also, did you notice how different the gallery looks while scrolling through the albums? Well, this is because we've enabled a feature called full screen scrolling. So if you want your gallery to look like this, what you want to do is head on into the gallery settings and enable full screen scrolling. So now when you scroll through your photos and videos, it's gonna scroll in full screen giving you a more immersive experience. If you mainly use your phone on low brightness, then one feature that you will find extremely useful is automatically cranking up the brightness whenever the camera app is launched so that you can see what you are trying to capture, which is again very useful if you mainly use your phone on low brightness and don't want to change the brightness whenever you launch the camera. So to set this up, you want to head on into modes and routines in the settings and make sure that you are in the routines tab. Then tap on the plus button and under if, tap on add the item that will trigger this routine. So here we want to add the camera and it's going to be under apps opened and here it is. Now you want to add the action that happens when the camera app is opened. So from this list, we are going to go into display then brightness and finally set this to whatever you feel comfortable. And lastly, don't forget to give the routine a name so that you know what it's for. And that's it. After saving this routine, the brightness is gonna go up whenever you launch the camera, which is very useful. And it's gonna go back to normal when you quit the camera. Now, you can also use modes and routines to automatically switch off 5G and also turn on the battery saver while you're asleep. Let me show you how. Alright, so once again, under modes and routines, you want to head on into the routines tab. 
then tap on the plus button and select the trigger for the routine and under this we're gonna select sleeping this will enable the phone to automatically detect when you're asleep and now under then we're gonna add what happens when you are asleep so first off head on into connections then network mode switch this to lte 3g or 2g this will make sure that 5g switches off when you're asleep and we're gonna add one more action and this time you want to head on into battery power saving and select on and that's it save the routine and checking the phone in the middle of the night you can see that 5g is off and the battery saver is enabled and as you start using the phone it's gonna switch back to normal so you can use this routine to save a bit of battery power especially when your phone is sitting idle at night Alright, so one thing that I've noticed is whenever I take the phone out of my pocket, I notice that the screen is on and the phone is showing the lock screen. This is annoying because it happens frequently and it kind of drains the battery. And secondly, I've also noticed that the screen keeps coming on whenever I've got the phone in my hand. So these two things are really annoying, but fortunately we can fix this by switching off two settings. So head on into the settings and then scroll down to advanced features. Inside advanced features tap on motion and gestures. And inside switch off double tap to turn on screen and lift to wake. And that's it. Now the phone is not gonna wake up by itself whenever you've got it in your hands or in the pocket of your pants. So you give your phone to someone maybe because they wanna make a phone call or browse the web. But instead, they open your gallery and start browsing through your personal photos. And they also might open your messaging app and check out all your private chats. Well, to prevent this exact thing from happening, you can enable a feature called Pin App, which will prevent your naughty friends from accessing your gallery and any other app on your phone. And this will pin the app on the screen and they will not be able to access anything else on your Galaxy smartphone. So you can see nothing happens even if I press the home or the back button. So this is a really powerful privacy feature. Now to unpin the app, press and hold the recents and the back button together. And now to access the phone, you will have to enter your biometrics. So there you go. Now everything is back to normal. Now this feature is disabled by default. So you will have to enable that by going into the settings and then security and privacy. Inside, you want to scroll down to more security settings and then scroll all the way down and enable pin app. So after enabling this, the next time you give your phone to someone, make sure to pin the app on the screen so that they cannot access your personal stuff on your smartphone. If you've got a high-end Samsung smartphone like the S22, 23 or the 24 Ultra, then what you want to do is head on into the settings and scroll down to device care. Inside device care, tap on memory and inside you'll see something called RAM Plus. So this feature uses the main flash memory as the system RAM. By default, this is set to 8 gigabytes, which I think is completely unnecessary on a phone like the S24 Ultra because you've already got 12 gigabytes of dedicated system RAM. So it's a good idea to switch this off because you're gonna gain 8 gigabytes of additional storage and it will also save your flash memory from additional wear and tear. And of course, it's a personal choice. If you want to leave it on, then leave it on. But again, I would recommend turning this off. Now, did you guys know that you can have the phone read out the caller's name or the phone number for incoming phone calls? Charlie's primary number. So this is quite a useful feature. You don't even have to look at the screen to know who's calling you. So to enable this feature, you'll have to open the dialer then tap on these three dots and head on into the settings now here tap on answering and ending calls and from here enable read caller names aloud now by default this is set to work only over bluetooth and headphones so tap here and change this to always and now whenever you get an incoming phone call charlie's primary number phone is gonna tell you who's calling you can also enable read caller names twice then the phone will read out the caller name twice whenever you get an incoming phone call. Charlie's primary number. 
Charlie's primary number. So change this setting according to what's best for you. Sometimes you might accidentally end up moving the icons or the widgets on the home screen, especially if you've got clumsy hands like mine. This actually happens a lot to me and it is annoying. So if you want to prevent this from happening, pinch in on the home screen and go to the home screen settings and turn this feature on which says lock home screen layout and this will lock the widgets and the icons in their place. Very useful if you have spent a lot of time creating the perfect home screen. So you might have noticed that I've got more than 5 icons in the bottom row which is also known as the favorites panel. Now the thing is, by default you will not be able to fit more than 5 icons in the favorites panel. You can see if I drag and drop, it just doesn't work. But fortunately through the magic of good luck, we can have more than 5 icons in the bottom row. So let me show you how. So what you want to do is open Galaxy Store on your smartphone and search for Good Lock. Once you find it, download and install it. Then open Good Lock and inside tap on Makeup and here download and install the Home Up module. Once you do, enable the Home Up module, then tap on Home Screen and change the favorite max count to 6 or 7. And once you do this, you will be able to fit more icons in the Favorites panel. And I actually recommend doing this because phones these days have a pretty big screen, especially the S24 Ultra. So fitting more icons on the home screen kinda makes sense. And just like the favorites panel, you can also do the same for your home screen. So head back into the home up module, then home screen, and set the home screen grid to 6 into 6. And now you should be able to fit more icons on the home screen. And this is a personal choice, so tweak this setting according to what's best for you. Anywho, with that, we have come to the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, share the video with your family and friends, and do make sure to subscribe to the channel. And this is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.